Hi, and welcome to this week's episode. My name's Alan, and today we're going to be looking at creating a business card inside of Affinity Designer. So let's get started. I'm going to go over to the file menu and I'm going to go and create a new document. Now I want to make sure that it's set to print press ready. My document units are in inches, color format is CMYK, and now when it comes down to the dimensions, the actual business card is going to be 3.5 by 2 inches. Now, since Affinity Designer version 1.2 doesn't have an option for bleeds currently, I'm sure that's something that we are looking forward to in the future, I'm going to add an extra quarter of an inch to my page width and my page height. So it's now 3.75 by 2.25 inches. I'm going to click on OK. And there we go. So right now I can't see where my bleeds um, or my guides are going to be. So I'm going to head over to the view menu and I'm going to choose guides manager. Now I'm going to go ahead and create some horizontal guides and some vertical guides. And there we have it. My horizontal guides are set to 0.125 inches, 2 inches, 0.25 and 2.125. And my vertical guides are 3.5, 0 0.125, 0 0.25 and finally 3.625 inches. Now the reason why we have bleeds is because in commercial printers they, they use paper that is larger than the final page size. Now this is for printed images over the trim edge. You could say about this really that the image bleeds over the edge. An image may bleed or extend over one or more sides. Now imagine that you need to print a booklet, um, a brochure, a magazine, or in this case a business card, and you have artwork like I do which covers the sides. Now after printing and trimming, you may get unwanted white edges if the print or trim operation was off-centered. So when an image bleeds beyond the page edges, unwanted white edges will not appear. And that's why we are creating this. Now, I'm sure you can look online and find many business card templates, but I really wanted to start this from scratch and do this inside of Affinity Designer. What I'm going to do, just to make myself more visually aware, I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle. I'm going to drag this out so it fills the whole of my document. I'm going to turn the fill to none and I'm going to set the stroke to a red color so it's a bit more obvious. I'm going to change the width to 18 points. There we go. Let's come out of that. So now this is what the bleed is going to be. Everything inside of this red area is guaranteed to be cut off and lost. Now with these guides inside here, these are really my safe zones. So anything here is going to be safe. So the important information like my logo, the company's logo, any text, you know, the company's name, phone number, etc. I really want to fit inside of this. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and actually let's create a new layer. And go ahead and use the place tool and go ahead and grab an image in. Now, this business card I'm creating is actually for a Nigerian restaurant. And the image I'm using is a picture of some plantain. And for those who know what that is, you know what I mean. And for those who don't, you are most certainly missing out. Okay, so now we've got this selected. What I want to do is select the image, come down to the effect, and I want to add a slight little gouge and blur to it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to eventually add a logo here and some text and I really want it to stand a bit more. So I'm only going to increase this slightly to maybe something like 3, 3.8, 3.6 would do. And if I need to make any necessary adjustments I can easily come back. There we go. So there we have that. So now what I want to do is head over to my other document because I've got a logo inside of here. I just want to grab this logo. Now this logo, I'm just going to command C to copy. I did create inside of Affinity as well. But for the purpose of this, I've already created it. And I'm going to go ahead and command V to paste that. 
and let's drag that up. And before I do that, let's just close this layer and I'm gonna drag, so let's rename this to bleed. So I can see what's going on. I'm gonna drag it above my layer there. There we go. So now I just wanna make sure that I'm inside these safe zones and nothing is gonna to be touching that bleed there. Here we go. And let's just line this logo up a bit better. There we go. So now what I wanna do now is come over to the text tool and I'm gonna actually write in the name of the company. And it's actually called Tommy's Kitchen. So I'm just gonna type that in. Now I'm just gonna adjust the font. I want something a bit more bold that's gonna stand out. I'm looking for impact. So let's just scroll down and find it. Here we go. I really wanna make this a bit bigger. So let's just drag this out. Yeah, something like that, something around 26 point will do for me in this case. Now, I'm not happy that the text is in black. I really wanna get this text it's all really to match up the same color as the logo. So what I'm gonna do first of all, I'm gonna use this eyedropper tool just to sample this color to make sure that's right. And let's just highlight this text. And let's click on this little swatch and there we have it. It's now matching up. Here we go. So what I'm gonna do now is, the actual restaurant itself is called Thomas Kitchen and they have a little sign underneath saying Euro Afro Fusion. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create another text box and let's just type that in. Now I actually wanna change this font to, uh, let's see, a font called Elam. Let's see if I can go ahead and find that. Here we go, Elam Park. And let's, let's see. Yeah, that will do. Let's go regular. Let's just drag this up. And let's line this up to the end of kitchen. And actually, let's line this up so it lines up with the this eye hair in kitchen. I'm going to drag this out a bit. There we go. Now, what I might want to do is actually select all of this. Let's select this text layer and the logo. And let's just bring it over slightly. Here we go. So now I get these guides coming down the middle and the vertical and the horizontal. So it's just telling me that it's snapping across the middle. Perfect. So what I wanna do now finally is to, for the front of this piece of card at least, is just add an address. So I won't put in the real address, but let's just create another, um, just create some more text there using the art text tool. There we go. Now, I'm going to just change this font for this one as well. So just get this selected and I just want to go back and choose Arial. And let's make this bold so it stands a bit more. And let's just reduce the size. Let's make this a bit smaller because it's a bit big. There we go. Now, you guys can go ahead and, you know, add email address and any other information that you need. I know in this case for uh, my client here, but basically I want to send this to him and sort of really just kind of make sure that he's happy with the final product before I go ahead and sort of really make any more sort of changes. Uh, what I want to do is, because I can't really see this text um, too much, I'm going to select this image and I'm just going to turn on the opacity a bit. Yeah, maybe something like 8583. Yeah, maybe a bit more. There we go. I'm happy with that. Now I can actually see the address. And you can see it's still inside of this safe zone. So for now, I'm happy with that as the front of the business card. Now, of course, inside of Affinity Designer 1.2, currently there is no option for you know creating artboards. I could go ahead and create a new document to create the back. But rather than doing that, since I've already got all this selected, I'm gonna just close these down and I just wanna group these together. Let's just select these two using the shift key and go command G. Let's double click to name that and let's call this front. And let's make that selected and press command J to duplicate that. And let's just call this one back. Now I'm gonna head inside this back Let's turn the front layer off. 
and we can see we've got all this hair still, it's fine. Now, there's information here that I don't need for the back. So if we dress, I'm gonna get rid of that. And let's get rid, let's actually get rid of this Afro Fusion. Let's get rid of that one. Let's select the actual name of the company. And let's actually make that a bit smaller. Now this is actually gonna be the name of the website. So I'm just gonna type that in. And let's make that a bit smaller still. I'm just gonna drag this down to the bottom right. And make sure it's snapping up to and staying with my safe zone. Now I'm gonna select the logo. And let's center that. And let, here we go. The guy to come up to tell me that I have got that perfectly centered. Here we go. So let's just close these layers up to tidy this up. Let's undo that and let's look at the front. Let's, there we go, so there's the front of my business card. And then we go and then we have the back. So for now, um, I'm happy with that. I'm happy to send that over to uh, my client. Again, I could put some email address and some more information on there if I need it. But for now, I'm fine. So what I'm gonna do now is head over to the file menu and I'm gonna make sure that I've only got the the front of the business card selected. I've turned off the back for now. Um, it's gonna actually, let's come back in there and before I forget and turn off the bleed for the front and let's turn off the bleed for the back. So we don't want to be sending that to the printers. And let's go file and down to export and let's choose PDF, let's go export and let's just give this a name, uh, save it to my desktop. Let's call this BC for business card, F for front, and let's hit save. Let's turn that off. Let's go for the back and do the same. Okay, so let's just get this out of the way and let's have a quick look at that. I'm gonna highlight these two and open them up in preview on the Mac. Let's just go full screen to have a quick look. There we go, and there's the back and there's the front. So what I can do now is quickly email that over to my client, make sure that he's happy with the way that's going. If necessary, if he needs me to add any more information onto here, I can add it onto here and I can send this over to the printers. Knowing that because I used Affinity Designer in creating the guides and those bleeds that we saw earlier, um, that I know that this is gonna be printed safely and I won't have to worry about losing any of that information. So there we go, let's just go back into Affinity and get those bleeds back on. And there we go. And that's how you create a business card inside of Affinity Designer. So if you guys have any questions or any thoughts or any feedback, do let me know and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.